Haggai chapter 1. Haggai chapter 1. Have you got your Bibles with you this morning? Three people, have you got your Bibles? Come on, the most enthusiastic church in the planet. That's us. Haggai chapter 1, we're going to read together from verse number 1. In the second year of King Darius, on the first day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai to Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, the governor, and to Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, the governor and the priest. This is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say, the time has not yet come for the Lord's house to be built. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Is it time for you yourselves to be living in your paneled houses while this house remains a ruin? Now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. You've planted much, but you've harvested little. You eat, but you never have enough. You drink, but you never have your fill. You put on clothes, but you are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. That's frustrating, right? Right there, the definition of frustration. Verse number six. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. Go up into the mountains, bring down timber, and build the house. Build the house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honoured, says the Lord. You expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. Why? That's what we want to know. Why? Why, God, when we've been working so hard, did we harvest little? When we eat, we never have enough. When we drink, we never have our fill. Why, God? It seems like everything that we're doing results in not a lot. You expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. Uh, I blew it away. Why, declares the Lord Almighty, because of my house, which remains a ruin, while each of you is busy with his own house. Therefore, because of you, the heavens have withheld their dew and the earth its crops. I called for a drought on the fields and the mountains, on the grain, the new wine, the oil, and whatever the ground produces, on men and cattle, and on the labor of your hands. Anyone feeling encouraged this morning? Oh, it's going to get better. Let's keep reading verse number 12. Then Zerubbabel, the governor, and Joshua, the high priest, and the whole nation, the whole remnant of the people, the Israelites, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the message of the prophet Haggai because the Lord their God had sent them and the people feared the Lord. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, gave this message of the Lord to the people. I am with you. Who knows? That's good news. Come on. God is with you. Whatever you're going through right now, you can know that God is with you. Whatever challenge you're facing, whatever obstacle, whatever meeting you've got coming up this week, you can walk confidently with your shoulders back, your head held high, because you can know beyond any shadow of doubt that God is with you. Who knows that's good news? God is with you. I am with you, declares the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel. And he stirred up the spirit of Joshua, the high priest. And he stirred up the spirit of the whole remnant of the people. They came and they began to work on the house of the Lord Almighty, their God, on the 24th day of the sixth month in the second year, for those who like details, of King Darius. Amazing. God stirred up the spirit of the governor. He stirred up the spirit of the high priest, and he stirred up the spirit of all of God's people. He stirred up the spirit of the church. He stirred up the spirit of anyone who calls on the name of God and knows that they have a God who is with them. He stirred up the spirit. And the title of this morning's message, this afternoon, is simply this, stir it up. Would you jump to your feet from the front to the back, from the side to the side, look someone square in the face, Point at them and say, stir it up. All right, go to someone else, grab them on the shoulders, get in their personal space, shake them a little bit. 
and shout, stir it up. Stir it up. God, I just thank you for these amazing people in this, in this house. God, I thank you for Audacious Church. You are moving amongst us. We thank you that each one of us, from the back to the front, each side, God, from the oldest to the youngest, we get to play our part in your vision. We get to partner with you, God, in what you're doing, and you're building your house. We get to be part of that. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. And everybody said, yeah. amen, amen, amazing. Well, I just thought while I was here in Manchester, I just wanted to be a little bit open and vulnerable, if that was okay, just on behalf of a friend. And uh, so this, what happens next, I'm, it's just, it's kind of a friend. If I, at any time, just use the word I, then, then it's a mistake. We just all know this is on behalf of a friend, okay? I was just asking. So you guys sell a safe, safe audience, uh, you're with me and you're just gonna, we're going to help my friend out because he needed some help. He was driving home from work. He happens to work here and it happens to live where I do, out near the Trafford Center. I don't know why you're laughing. Driving home, it was rush hour. And how many people drive home on the M602 on rush, rush hour in the week? Give me, yeah, you, you know what my friend experiences, right? Apparently, it's, it's Bedlam, and the M602 is blocked, and there's a junction. I think it's junction two where you need to get off, because if you don't get off, you're in trouble. Because the M602 turns into the M62, and before you even know it, you're going to end up in Liverpool. <laughs> so you need to get off, right? And so there's a junction, and what my friend knows, right, 98% of people at this junction, they're going to turn right because like they're going to Bolton or Worsley or whatever, whatever is kind of north on the M60. And I, my friend joins 2%, only 2% of the queue to turn left, okay, to go near where my friend lives, near the Trafford Center. And so he knows only 2% only are going to turn left. And so what my friend did, and I know we would all do this. We would all do this. Like, we would all do what my friend did, and we just turned, got on the, 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 the section of road that is so underutilized. <laughs> so underutilized. I mean, it's been laid the same tarmac, got the same plan and purpose for its life. It's just lying there. Like, someone used me. I'm here for a reason. Please, I was born for such a good reason, as good as lane three, I'm here. So what my friend thought is just, I'm going to send this guy into his destiny. I'm going to drive on him. Some people like to refer to it as like the hard shoulder, I, I don't know, it's just fourth lane. And, and he drove on there, and before he know it, knows it, there's like a brown punto that goes straight in front of him on the hard shoulder. Like, why is this brown punto driving on the hard shoulder? You got a problem? Don't you know your highway code? So, so what I did was, what this guy did was drive to the side of him, look in his window. He didn't swear or anything like that. Uh, and because my friend's a pastor and he looked in the window and he just thought, I'm going to help this guy. I'm on the planet to equip people, you know, uh, to release people into a higher level of living and life. So I just thought, hey, mate, just, just have a think about it. So all I did, think about it. Tina's winner, think about it. You know the highway code? Think about it. All right, because he slammed his brakes on. I could have been, if I was not an advanced driver, I would have been straight in his back. So I did this guy a favor, two favors, didn't go in his boot, and just think about it, all right? Drove on, I'm just going to get on with my life, release the hard shoulder into its destiny, release this brown punto to at least have a think about it. Everything's good. The world's a better place. Before too long, I look in the rear view mirror and this brown punto's turned ugly, turned angry. I don't know if you've ever seen a brown punto turn angry, like the hazards were on and everything. Flashing at me, the guy's like, pull over. I'm like, what are you doing? You were driving on the hard shoulder, you nutter. Anyway, he drives up the inside of me. Now I'm thinking, this guy's undertaking me. What is this guy doing? 
and with this lane split in two. And so we're driving like side by side. And I just thought, I'm going to do this guy a favor again. I'm just going to help him to think about it. So I look at him and I go, think about it. And as I'm doing this, I see in this brown punto a full uniformed police officer. I'm like, hey, have a great day. Hey, sir, have a great day. I'm out of there. I am out of there. If you're a police officer this morning, I just want to say, let's pray later at the prayer wall. We'll deal with it there. You know, but often, I reckon, in life, we can be stuck in traffic jams that we should never be in. We can find ourselves waiting and being too passive about something where God wants to stir us up and move us forward. I wonder if you were to look at your own life today, where is it that you are sat in passivity, waiting for something to happen? Maybe you spiritualize it up, and maybe you don't just say, oh, I'm just waiting for something to happen, but you've just used language like this, I'm just waiting for God. And then everyone's like, oh, yes, yes, that's very spiritual. When actually God wants to stir you up and cause you to take a left turn and stop waiting for something that God has commissioned you to do. I wonder if there are things in your life where you're like, yeah, I should probably do something about that. I'm just guessing that there's probably something on all of our minds right now that we're thinking, yeah, I should probably do something about that. I believe God wants to speak to us today and he wants to stir us up. Like in Haggai where he stirred up the governor, he stirred up the spirit of Joshua the high priest. I believe God, like he stirred up the Israelites, I believe God wants to stir us up today. God wants to get us out of lethargy, out of apathy. God wants to get us moving to, while we're on the planet to make a difference. And so I want you to be in a place today just to say, God, would you stir it up? Would you stir it up within me? Would you shout one more time, stir it up? Stir it up. The definition to stir means to rouse from inactivity, quiet, contentment, indifference, and to stir up potential. In this room right now, there is literally hundreds of people's worth of limitless potential in this room. Much of that limitless, God-inspired, God-created, God-gifted potential that lies in this room is dormant. And I believe God wants to stir up every little mustard seed of dormant potential within every single person in this room and watching online. And God wants to stir you up so that potential energy turns to kinetic energy. Thank you, GCSE Science, for that one. But God wants to shake us. He wants to stir us so that we don't just sit static waiting for something to happen, but rather we understand, God, you've stirred up my spirit. You've put me on this planet to make a difference. I'm here to make something happen. God, would you stir me up? Would you stir my spirit? God, would you move any potential in me to kinetic energy? God wants to get you moving from this place. God wants each one of us to be moving, active. His Word is in you. The Bible says His Word is living and active. It's living and active. Joel chapter 3 and verse 9 says, Rouse the warriors. Let the fighting men draw near and attack. And God wants to rouse every warrior in this place. And right now I'm speaking to a bunch of people, but I'm speaking to the spirit that God has put in you. And I'm speaking to the warrior inside of every single person. And God wants to stir up this generation. God wants to stir his church. He wants to rouse every warrior. He wants every fighting man, woman, child, young person to attack. He wants us to go and do something with our life. 
He's not asking you right now to defend. He's asking you to attack. He's asking that each one of us would take our place on the field and we would begin to recognize God has gifted me. God has put talents in me. God has a plan for me. God has a purpose for me. And I'm not going to sit any longer. I'm going to stand to my feet. I'm going to allow God to stir my spirit. And I'm going to move. I'm going to make a difference with my life. I'm going to make it count. I'm going to attack my goals. I'm going to attack my dreams. I'm going to attack purpose. I'm going to attack building the church. I'm going to attack. I'm going to attack. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 6 says, Fan into flame. You heard from Pastor Russell last week, who every time he comes, comes and stirs our spirits, pushes us, pulls us to a new dimension, a new level. And now this week is our turn to fan into flame the gift of God that has been given to you through the laying on of hands. There is so much gift and talent on your life. It would be criminal for your gifts and your talents not to be utilized. It would be criminal for us to hold back and say, I just don't feel like I have a place. When God has given you a place, that God is calling you to be a pillar in the house and contribute all of his gift and talent that's on your life. It would be criminal for us to sit back and wait for things to happen. When God said, go, when God commissioned us to be the answer, many of the prayers that we're praying, God has said, you're already the answer. All I need you to do is go. God wants to change all of this potential into kinetic energy, movement energy. He wants to cause each one of us to take our place as a pillar in the house of God. You matter. You are needed. You are required for what God wants to do. You have a purpose. You have a place. You are significant. Your gift counts. Your gift will bring breakthrough. What you have right now is going to make a difference. Haggai chapter 1 in the Bible, when God stirred up the spirit of the people, and if we're going to live stirred, and if we're going to shake our planet, thank you, James Bond, we're not going to be shaken or stirred. We're going to be stirred and we're going to shake the world. We're going to be stirred and shaken We don't want any oars around here. We'll have the and. If you want to live stirred, then the first thing you're going to have to do is listen to the right voice. Listen to the right voice. I wonder what voices you've got around your world. I wonder what the influence of your life is. I wonder who it is that you tune your ear in. I wonder what culture it is that makes a profound difference in the way you live your life. In Haggai chapter 1 and verse number 2 to verse 4, this is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say, everybody, everybody's saying, these people say, the culture says, oh, the friend told me this. Some person who's uh, just not doing much with their life said to me, somebody who wants to keep me down told me this. Everybody else is saying, the people in the Israelite camp, everybody was saying, oh, it's it's not yet time. Not, Not yet. The time's not yet come to build the house. Just, just get on with building your, your house. Just look after yourself. Do you know what you need? You just need some good old-fashioned me time, says the Bible nowhere. Do you know what you need? You just need just to think about yourself more often. I mean, how often do you really need to think about yourself? Haggai chapter 1 verse 2, these people, everybody else is saying, 
And yet God comes through the prophet Haggai and says, yeah, everybody else might be saying that. But I want to say something completely different. It might be challenging, yes. It might get you outside of your own box, yes. It might feel like inconvenient. Did I just say that? It might feel inconvenient, but God's voice came right against what everybody else was saying. It was amazing, right? In Chester, we have a building that we've been in six months. Got in there in November. Incredible God provision. It's amazing. And God's doing good things every Sunday. And Paul Reed is over there preaching today. And people are going to be there for the first time. People are going to respond for the first time. God's building his church as he said he would do. God's doing amazing things. And, and yet it would be amazing, right? The amount of people, voices, Maybe well-intentioned voices that, that would have said, oh, you know, the thing in Chester is tough in Chester. In terms of building church, it's pretty tough. And, you know, most churches have been looking for a building for, for, for around 10 years. And so, you know, it's, it's uh, yeah, we'll pray for you for the next 10 years. People, it, amazing how many people, when, when the first obstacle came, that it looked like maybe this building isn't going to happen, but that's not a problem. If that's not the building, there's another one out there. There's a, there's a lot of buildings around, and so it's not a major deal, but people come and say, you know, I just, just feel like God's saying, this isn't, you're not going to get this building, but, um, but you're not going to get the building. Oh, thank you, thank you. Pray for me. But, you know, and it's like, man, just, just, just a minute, like, there's a, many voices saying you can't. There, there is infinite voices saying this week is going to be a tough week. There's going to be many obstacles that you face this week that will scream in your face saying we shall not be moved. There's many things this week are going to make it tough for you. And you can be tempted to tune your ear into what everybody else is saying. You could be tune, tune your ear and, uh, and listen to what the people would say negatively about your life. Or you can even listen to what the obstacles are, are saying to you. Uh, the, the things, the challenges that you face, you can be listening to them. And they may be real. And they may be tough. And they may be challenging. But maybe, just maybe, God is saying, I've put, I've allowed that obstacle to be there because I want to see how high and how strong you can climb. I want to see and I want you to realize there is more in you than you ever realized. And so that challenge is the making of you. It's not the breaking of you, it's the making of you. And so maybe God wants to stir us up. But if we're going to live stirred, we've got to listen to the right voice. We've got to listen to the right voice. Joel chapter 2 and verse 28 and 29. God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men, if we get any old men in the room, no, I'm joking, don't. Will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will pour out my spirit on all people. God has dreams for you. God has visions for you. God has possibility for you. He has potential for you. God has many, many things ready for you. Which voices are you listening to? Which voices are you tuning your ear into? Which culture is deciding the way you're going to approach this week? Which voice is deciding what you will attempt this week, this year, and what you will not touch? What are the things that you feel like you cannot accomplish this year? Maybe God is stirring you up today. Maybe God, through His Spirit, is stirring your spirit and speaking to you, saying, listen 
to the right voice. Listen to the right voice. The second thing, if you're going to live stirred, if you're going to shake your world, number one, you've got to listen to the right voice. The second thing you've got to do is take a reality check. Take a reality check. Verse number five of Haggai chapter one. Now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. Give careful thought to your ways. I know you guys haven't done this, but I've done this for sure. You know, listening to a message or, or someone said something inspirational and you're like, man, I so wish that Dave could have heard that. Like, I know you've not done that. I'm just, that's just me, right? The Bible says in Haggai chapter 1 and verse 5, give careful thought, not to Dave's ways. Give careful thought to your ways. I wonder this morning, today, right now, in your seat, I wonder if you could not think about the person to your left or to the right. I wonder even if you were, for a moment, just not think about What's coming up this week? Right, the people that you're going to meet and the people with way bigger problems than your problems, way bigger attitudes than your attitudes. I wonder if right now we could just forget all of that stuff for now. And I wonder if we could right now just take a reality check. Give careful thought to your ways. If we're going to be stirred We've got to consider where we're at. God spoke to the people and said, I, I want you just for a moment to think about what's going on in your life. I want you just, just for a few moments just to think about how you've positioned yourself, how you've positioned life. I want you to think about what you're accomplishing and and your purpose, and just for a moment, just while we've got this moment, think about why you do everything. Think about where you're at. Take a reality check. God says, okay, well, you know, while you've been building your suite, I'm not saying they're bad, but they look incredible. Those paneled houses, God speak. I don't know if you've, you've just noticed that, you know, your houses, are, they're, they're great. They're really, really nice. I mean, really nice. But I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't know if you know, but my house remains a ruin. I just put it out there. This is God. Let's just have a think about that for a moment. Recently, Glenn and I were on a train to London. And so we rock up to Piccadilly Station. We see a Virgin Trains thingy. It's like, it's there, it's a train at the platform. Jump on, we're on the train. That is a success in our world. On a train, we're there. 42A, 42B, sit down. We're in the right seat. We're on a Virgin train at Manchester Piccadilly Station, heading to London. That was until the announcement. I don't know if the announcer was on the wrong train or something. But the announcer announced, welcome to Virgin Train, whatever, to Aberdeen. I'm thinking, this guy is stupid. Like he's got on the wrong train, right? It's amazing how you can be on the right train, Virgin Trains, at the right station. You can be in the right seat. I mean, this is good. You can be on the right train, right platform, right seat, and yet you're going to the wrong place. And today you can be sat in the right station for your audacious church. Woohoo! You can be sat in your seat that you sit in every week, 42A. 
But I don't know, I'm just saying, just take a reality check. What is it for you? But you can be on completely the wrong train. And the Israelite people here are, are on the right thing. They're listening to a right voice right now. They're in the right seat, but they're going the wrong place. They're going to build myself land when they're supposed to be going to build the house of God and see what God will do in your house. And maybe today we can just together, together, let's, let's all of us just take a reality check. What are we building in our life? What are we building in our life? When we think we're gone, we've left the planet, what would be the mark of our life? What would be, people say about us? that we accomplished? What is it that we built? And today, would you be so bold and courageous enough to say, God, I want you to give me a reality check today. Haggai says, come on, guys. There is more in you than building your house. If you come over here and you built the house of God, you watch what happens to your house. You watch what happens when you bring your gifts Bring your talents, bring your, yourself, bring all that you have and you plant yourself in my house. You build my house. You watch what happens. Not one of you will be disappointed. Not one of you will think, live a life of regret because you've sown your life into the right destination. You've built your house according to the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 3. Seek first the kingdom of God. And everything else be added to you. Seek first the kingdom of God. I wonder if you today could just have a look at yourself. Listen to the voice of God in your world. Take a reality check. So where am I at today? Am I building what God is building? Am I building what God has put me on the planet to build? Am I extending the kingdom of God through my life? And I wonder if you do the third thing today. If you're honest enough, I wonder if today you would make a step of progress. Because if you're going to live stirred and if you're going to make a difference in this world, then you're going to need to get the right voices around you. I want to suggest a life group can be the right voices around you. The Bible tells us there is wisdom in a multitude of counselors. I've made too many mistakes to do life on my own, just me and God. Because some things I think they're God. I stick them in the pray, prayer wall and then I pull them out six months later and I look at my prayer request from a year ago and go, no, nah, I didn't really need that. <laughs> I just maybe it's me, but if I just did this life, me and God, that's all I need. I would have made a lot of mistakes. But thank God that he has put gifted people who also can hear the voice of God and together as Church, God's idea. We can hear the voice of God together. We can discern together the voice of God. And today, we can make a step of progress. One of the most godly things you can do today by making a step of progress is to get connected to a life group. Is to get connected and join us. Join us on the team. It's so simple, so practical. And yet you watch what happens when you say, God, I'm going to listen to the right voice. I'm going to take a reality check and God, if things kind of seem right, but are going in the wrong direction, I'm going to get on the right direction. I'm going to get on the right direction. There's so many things that you've been working on building your house that God wants to use those to build his house. Third thing, we've got to make a step of progress today. Don't let these 24 hours go without making a decision and doing something practical today. Every person in this room, 
if you want to live stirred, you want to make a difference with your life, today you can make a step of progress. You can do something today. Decide. Things are changing. Things are changing. Matthew 6 verse 21 says, Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. There your heart will be also. Wherever you put your time, wherever you put your energy, wherever you put your talents, wherever you put your gifting, wherever you put your creativity, wherever you put your administration, wherever you put your leadership, wherever you put your hospitality, wherever you put your diary, wherever you put your monthly spending plan, wherever you put whatever resource God has given to you, your heart will follow. Your heart today is a result of your treasure yesterday, where you placed your treasure. If you want to get on the right train, kingdom of God, it is simple and practical as saying, God, I'm going to lift up my treasure and I'm going to bring it to the house of God. And my heart will catch up. God wants to use you to do something incredible. God wants to use you to do something amazing. God wants to stir your spirit just as He stirred the governor, just as He stirred the high priest, just as He stirred His chosen people. God wants to stir your heart today to cause you to make a difference. And today we've got to tune our ear in, say, God, I'm going to listen not to what everybody else is saying. God, I'm going to listen to the right voice. God, I'm going to, as I'm listening to you, God, I'm I'm going to be humble enough just to take a reality check where I'm at today. I've got to recognize today's the day I can make a step of progress. You can make that step today by connecting with someone. You can make that step today by buying a coffee for someone. You can make that step by joining the team, by connecting to a life group, by putting a prayer into a prayer wall, by taking your thanksgiving at the end of the service, putting in a pink praise report. You can make that step today by phoning that person up and saying, I need to say, I release you. I forgive you. You can knock on somebody's door this afternoon and invite them to next week's service. Tomorrow at work, you can make a difference. Just a simple step of progress. Haggai chapter 1 verse 14 says, The people obeyed and they built the house of God. I'm inviting you right now. Come on, warriors. Take your place. Let us together, let us build and extend the kingdom of God.